Hey, I'm Sarah Hodges, and this is Executives Uncut, the podcast where we provide solutions for the corporate cycle of hell. Today, we're talking about coaching for leaders, specifically the impact they can have with their teams as they learn to ask questions. And I'm here today with Rory Rowland, speaker, consultant, podcaster, and author of three books and a corporate coach. I'm tired just listing all of that, which is different from an executive coach, by the way, but Rory, welcome. It is my pleasure, Sarah. Thanks for letting me be here again. <laughs> okay. So Rory's saying that because normally we go live, as you guys know, but we had some tech issues and we're doing this through Zoom. It's just like a little bit of a different thing today. And I'm not used to that. And we've just recorded like 20 minutes of amazing content, like really amazing content, I promise. And well, okay, we didn't actually record it because I never pressed the record button. <laughs> Oops. Hashtag podcast fail. I mean, we don't edit any of these ever. So I'm just letting you know. You know what that happens sometimes? Sometimes it you, happens. It happened to you, Rory, didn't it? Did. it? Absolutely. <laughs> I've you... done it. I've done it with Michael Bungay Stainer, the guru of coaching. And I was interviewing him for the coaching habit, did 47 minutes and didn't hit the record button. And I was really upset because it took me six months to get the guy. So it took me another six months to get him back on the uh, program again. So it was brutal. It was an entire year of, of no. reliving that mess up. So yours is easy. We can fix it right now. So I'm here we go. So, well, thank you for being compassionate and understanding. Um, life Already happens. setting a great tone. Yes, life totally happens. And, and life is kind of like we just met by chance right on mm -hmm. LinkedIn and right. we had a phone call and we realized how much overlap there was in terms of our values and belief systems. And we started talking about, you know, like coaching questions and books we could write together. And um, we've just, we're so in line about our methodology, but we do um, take a little bit of a different approach to um, coaching. You're more of a co corporate coach, right? Can you tell right. us a little more about that? Yeah, a corporate coach is a little bit different than an executive coach. The executive coach, you're working with one executive. And as a corporate coach, I teach the entire sales training. And then I realized the sales training didn't really work until it didn't get traction until we taught the management team how to coach. And once I started teaching the management team how to coach the sales training, we really got traction and, and truly tremendous results. Sometimes we got organizations that were outperforming the peers by three times. So it was really a tremendous a success story, but I recognized that the coaching was the key to that. And as I did that, I had more and more people start to ask me, can you teach my entire management team to do that? So I typically do a three-year contract with a, an organization where we take them through and we teach the entire management team how to coach. And it's truly a, a transformational experience and the organization changes. And that's what I really love to see is because now they, they, they lead by asking questions. And I love people who lead with questions. That's so, that's so awesome. Can you, t do you have any like specific success stories you can share with us about what that looked like in the middle of it? Uh, yeah. And I'm going to just drive down to just one manager, I had a branch manager, uh, one organization, and she went to another branch to kind of fix it. It was in a troubled branch. And, they, and since she was a really powerful leader, they said, Hey, would you go over there and fix this branch? And she did. And when she got there at eight o'clock, the very first morning, uh, one of her key employees walked up and handed her resignation letter and said, I need to resign. You know, this just isn't working out for me. This is my two weeks notice. And she really needed her because she would have had a complete novices on. I mean, she was the only other person there that knew something about the systems, the processes. And she knew that she goes, Rory just says, ask a question. And so she goes, oh, my God, I've got to ask a question. And so she just literally thought off the top of her head. She goes, I'll grant you five wishes. And the employee just kind of looked back and goes, hmm, that's interesting. And she goes, what would you, what would you want? You know, why are you leaving and what would you want? And she goes, I really, I just want to learn this, I want to learn that. And it was really about personal development. And everybody, I, I love the concept that success is progress. And everybody wants to progress in their career. Even if they want to stay in the same job, they don't want to be the same version of themselves this year as they were last year. And what is going to be the new version of yourself this next year, I think really was her question. And by granting those five wishes, uh, she it, it truly made a, a huge impact. But the key to that story is two years later, she stayed. She was very happy, very successful relationship between her and her branch manager. And the branch manager said the real key to the story was two years later, overhearing that person work with a, a branch manager or new two new employees. And they asked her on their very first day, why do you like working here? And she said, well, the management team listens, but she says, sometimes if you ask nice, they grant wishes. And then she told that story and she goes, that's why I like to work here. And she goes, and she told them I was ready to quit. I was ready to leave, but they truly listened, And that made an impact. And I think that's such an important key from a corporate perspective is to 
have those kinds of stories permeate throughout the entire organization. You see when you're successful in coaching, the stories change. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's so awesome. It really left, it left an impact on her. And then that mm -hmm. was impacting every single incoming employee. And that changes a culture, which is really, and, and to me, you know, I think there's two key takeaways. Like your, this story is also an example of why open-ended questions work. Mm -hmm. You know, because if she would have said, oh, you're upset, well, I'm going to give you this, 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 and this, like a few extra days vacation, a new right. desk, you know, she wouldn't have been speaking to the values of that employee because she didn't know what the heck they were. But so exactly by keeping right. that, yeah, by keeping that open and then listening, she was able to meet her needs, just really, that's profoundly powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of my favorite stories from, I mean, I've got a whole host of them, uh, but you know, one of my favorite ones, but I had a CEO call me and it was like a Christmas present. And he said, I just got to tell you how much you've made an impact in the organization. And it, you know, and I wanted to call you before Christmas so that you knew that over the holidays. And these are the things you've done. And I worked with that organization, I worked with the board, the senior leadership team. Um, and that was really powerful to, you know, this stuff works in the board level too. Oh, and, absolutely. And one of the things I taught that CEO is he was having to disconnect with his board. And as I watched that process, I pulled him aside and we had a coaching session, <clears throat> pardon me. And I said, I think this is the misconnect for you. When you finish answering a question, can you add on, did I answer your question? Is there anything more that you need to know? And he says, that's dramatically changed the relationship between his himself and his board. And he called me to say that was a really powerful tip. So that's the key. Is there anything else you need to know? Is there anything else you're looking for? How else can I help? It seems trite when we're at a, we're in a retail organization in a retail store and they say, is there anything else I can help you with? It seems trite then, but if you're in a board level perspective and you've had communication conflict in the past, to be able to ask that question, did that answer your question? Do you need anything more? That's really powerful stuff. Yes, absolutely. And, and it, you're in kind of a position of, of, of service too, right? A supportive position of service and that helps everybody around you feel safe to say, actually, you know, yeah, I, I, I do have a couple other questions or I have a follow-up. It gives them the space to then make that conversation really meaningful, right. which is awesome. I've, I've also noticed, um, and you may have seen this, the question really working, um, you know, I, I have... I have, and I think it's important to say that there's a difference between closed ended yes or no questions or questions that don't really go anywhere and mm -hmm. open ended questions where you really want to gather lots of information. And that's mm -hmm. your, your goal. I think closed ended questions people use to to um, they aren't really questions at all because people mm -hmm. use them to kind of to continue to have control over the conversation. Right. Right. Um, and I often hear people were they're like, well, I, I gave very, very clear directions. And then I asked them if they had any questions. And I'm like, okay, well, you asked a question, so. I, I've got but. a great story. I've got a great story for that if you like. Uh, Go for it. Yeah, I had, a CF, I had a CEO that I was working with, and she had been CFO and got promoted to CEO, and she had promoted a CFO, and it wasn't working. It wasn't clicking. And actually, in anger, she had actually uh, brought the CFO in and actually read her job description to her. To her and says, this is what I want you to do. And then of course she asked, do you understand? And of oh. course, <laughs> this, you know, there's no other, there's no right answer other than yes. Even if right. they're totally in the dark. I mean, and, and I've done this in the, in the business world. I've, I said, people said, you understand? Oh yeah, and I went off and I spent three days doing something they, they did not want done. Um, and then they had to come back and my Thursday, we try to fix it and get it done by Friday. So right. anyway, <laughs> it just, but, but she did that. And so she asked me, she goes, is there a question you can ask in that process? And this is one of my favorite coaching questions is, uh, she said, what should I have done in that process? What can I have done? And, and, and the question, I, this is my favorite coaching question is, what is your perception of my expectations of you with yeah. regards to this? And yeah. then to this, and to this, and to this, and this. What do you think you, that, what do you, what's your perception? What do you think I want here? Mm -hmm. And then you can really have an in-depth question. You can go down that rabbit hole of how the board reports will be put together, how the monthly financials will be put together, what, uh, how we're going to do the, the loan documentation, whatever it is. You can really dive down into that and say, these are the kinds of reports that I'm looking for. This is the kind of information I'm looking for. And really have a, you know, a two or three hour conversation so that person has real clarity. And then have them describe okay, in the future, this is how I'm going to do this. Will that meet your needs is what they need to ask back too. So you really, truly close that communication loop. 
Yes, I, I love and I love what you're saying about closing the communication loop, because to me, that is clarity. I think mm -hmm. a lot of executives think, oh, well, if I just give specific enough instructions and I leave no wiggle room for doubt, but everybody still perceives that differently, right? And they filter it according to their own values and their own right. priorities and, and right. their perception of what they think your priorities are. And they look for the subtext, like all of those things happen, you know? So right. I feel like too, on a, on a more micro uh, project level that, um, it's, it can be it can benefit uh, employers or, or leaders to say something along the lines of you know so so what do you imagine this will look like when it's finished exactly. you know right or or so just so we're on the same page how do you see your role within this project like mm -hmm. like how, how how would you how would you define your responsibilities and mm -hmm. you know and not in a non-threatening very detached way just so that person can speak up and you can make sure you're on the same page but all of that's asking questions and then shutting up and listening. <laughs> exactly right. And and that's so hard because we're so taught even in like, you know, for me, it's little league experiences, but, you know, Boy Scouts or things like that, where we tell people what to do. And we think telling is leadership. And really, uh, I love the concept of leading with questions. Uh, I interviewed Michael Marquardt, who wrote a book called Leading with Questions for my podcast a while back. So please forgive the plug. But, okay. you know, but it was, it, it's a really powerful concept. And I, and I buy that book for all of the CEOs that I work with. So they really get a concept of what it means to lead with questions. And it's truly a transformational concept because when you go with that process, your meetings are different. You know, your whole process is different. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so let's get into, you know, mm -hmm. three specific tips for executives mm -hmm. who want to lead through coaching. Like what's the best way for them to get started? Yeah, the first one is, I love this one from a guy named Doug Booker. He's a coach that I met here, obviously, too, through LinkedIn. And I reached out to him and I said, what's your favorite tip? And he says, just master the art of asking, what do you think? Nice. That's I, awesome. I love that. It, you know, how hard can this be? If you can just master the art of asking, what do you think? And, and where that becomes part of your vernacular, that becomes your go-to mindset. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I just think that's so important. So just master the art of asking, what do you think? I think is really, really powerful. And uh, it, it just engages people. So often in corporations, we want people to be engaged and we want them to be involved. And and uh, and so I'm going to give another plug here if he'll give me, but my book, My Best sure. Boss Ever, um, I had interviewed about 200 people, mostly on planes because they're they're locked in and we're business people and we were there in first class of the exit row because uh, those are the, those you know there's always business people in the exit row because they want that sure. little bit of extra leg room. And anyway, I was asking them and I always asked them, you know, who was the best boss you ever worked for? Where's the best manager you worked for? And one gentleman said he had been a on a sales team and they got a brand new VP of sales and he came in from another company and he was a little chaffed because he actually wanted the job. So he had you know he had promoted you know applied for it, didn't get it, you know, he was chafed. And anyway, uh, with the process, he brought them in, they got them all together to resort for their very first team meeting. And these were all the sales managers and the VP of sales. And you would think he'd come in and say, here's my three bullet points, what I want you guys to do, blah, blah, blah. He didn't. He, he said, you know, tell me about those people who made the greatest impact of your life. I mean, those people that you would consider on your board of directors. And of course, they'd be parents and teachers and coaches and people like that. And he'd say, then what impact did they make in your life and how do they help you? get to where you are today, which is a great question in itself. How do they help you get to where you are today? And uh, and so they went around the room and they shared that story. And he said, there were some tears. There were some really people that shared some really dramatic uh, impact stories of people who had turned their lives around. Uh, they'd have either been an alcoholic or a drug addict or things like this and the impact it had made. And so then at the end, he, he asked them, he says, okay, now, my question to you is, as we go back and we work with our teams, whose board of directors do you want to be on? Who do you want to make an impact with? What kind of impact do you want to make in that in their life? And I think that's really the, the concept of, of leaving a legacy. And if I, can, uh, if I can finish with leaving the legacy story, I'd love to do that at the end. That's a, that's a plug for the leave the legacy story. But I think it's so important for people to when we're coaching for leaders, the real legacy is what we want to leave, what legacy we want to leave as, as leaders. And I think that's the real key. And so I've got a story to help illustrate that point too. But anyway, I hope that answers awesome. your question. Yeah, no, that's great. So um, it's, is that, is there any other tips that you have for us before we get to the, the leaving the legacy story and the coaching challenge? Um, you know, just as we talked about earlier, I love the question, what, you know, what is your perception 
of my expectations of you? That's truly my favorite coaching question because yeah. it just reads to so much clarity. And you really, uh, you, you can get rid of all the problems. It was amazing to see this CEO and CFO have such a conflict and how that question really clarified that. The CFO did not survive. Uh, she still wasn't able to produce what the CEO wanted, but they were able to have a much clearer clearer conversation based on that down the road. And that's a that's an important key. But I think the also the, the other side of the coin is too, from, from an organization, you know, I teach the entire management team how to coach, but a lot of people who are listening to this podcast are individual managers inside a corporation that does not have a corporate, a coaching culture. And they wonder, how can I make changes with that? And, mm -hmm. and I'm saying you can make changes because the key is, if you use these tools with just your team, and you also use these tools with your colleagues, people notice change. They notice oh, yeah. how engaged your team is. And if you want to be in a position where you can truly be promoted down the road, use these tools because success cannot be hidden. It's like a bright light in the night. They will see you. They'll see your team performing better. They'll see the synergy. They'll see the sense of camaraderie. They'll see the momentum. They'll see people working together. And it's because you're asking questions and you're engaging your team rather than telling them what to do. And I just think mm -hmm. that's such an important concept is, is to do that. A lot of people say, I can't change things. Yes, you can. You can change things yeah. just by changing from telling people what to do to asking questions. Yes, that's so great. I mean, and I've seen that with my clients as well. When they mm -hmm. start asking questions, it really shifts the culture. Um, people, they, they have less personnel issues. Everyone's on the same board. Everyone's working harder, more creatively. Everyone feels safe so they can use higher brain function and they're more focused, you know, it's mm -hmm. and, and across the board again and again. And it's awesome that you're seeing the same thing. Um, and so for this week's coaching challenge, you know, we, we, we want to just encourage you to start to get comfortable asking open-ended questions because I remember when I very first did my coach training program many years ago, they said that we did uh, open-ended versus closed-ended questions and we had to come up with an open-ended question and everyone was like deer in headlights. It can be really challenging because we are right. not used to doing that. We want to we ask closed-ended questions to drive the conversation. So for this week, coaching challenge to all the listeners out there, make a list, like write mm -hmm. down a list of open-ended questions questions you can commonly use with your team to help them solve problems. And I also recommend to really focus on questions that start with how, because those are often the most powerful. Sometimes the what or the why questions, people can get a little bit defensive, but if but asking how questions will pretty much always be open-ended and they'll always be very um, detached. You know, mm -hmm. they're not going to put people on edge very much. Um, right. What's your favorite coaching question? Well, actually, just the word you asked right there is, you know, the what question. You talked about the power yeah. of the how, and the how is very, very powerful. But just right there, what you did right there was exactly what, what I like is the what question. Yeah. You know, what would you do? What's your vision? Uh, what part would you like to play in this? So asking the what and the how questions are very, very important uh, to helping lead the team in a positive way. There's there's no question. That's, that's a key. Yeah. And you also said something there that, that I want to go down a rabbit hole just for a moment is the, the power of coaching and learning how to ask questions can dramatically change relationships. And if I can tell one story, I had a client, a CEO, and she had truly given up on one of her employees, one of her managers, and their relationship had gotten to the point where they just, they were barely on speaking terms, which is never good for an organization. And everybody in the organization knew it. And so I went to the CEO and I said, hey, can I work with this person? And to see what really is her vision, where does she want to be? What does she want to do? All of those kinds of things. But do I have your blessing to tell her that her career is on the line here? And she goes, absolutely. So I went in. Um, it was like a nine-hour trip to get there and back. And I, I went about three or four times that year. And in one of the conversations, probably the third or fourth conversation, I asked her, I said, on a scale of one to 10, how difficult are the conversations that we're having? And she goes, you know, if 10 is difficult, this is easily a nine or 9.5. Wow. And I said, but how comfortable are they on a scale of one to 10? One is is uh, you know very comfortable 10 is very uncomfortable and she said they're probably at one or a two and 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 i i didn't ask her why she answered that but i went back and analyzed it myself and i think this is the key there's one thing to ask questions but you truly want to be curious about how we can help that person succeed 
And that person did. She made the decision to be demote herself. She went into the CEO's office and said, hey, uh, this is not working. I'm not in the right fit. This is, you know, I'm like pushing water uphill. And she went to the CEO and the CEO said it was worth the entire price of the entire program to deal with that one issue because it solved so many problems with the organization. But wow. the key, the great thing about coaching is if you do it effectively, you can have incredibly difficult conversations in a, in a very, very comfortable way. And, yeah. and the reason it was comfortable, and this is so important for people, when they're asking questions, you'll be curious, but deep down, they need to know that you care about their success, that you're asking this because you want them to be successful and you want to see them succeed almost more than you want to see yourself succeed. And when they know that there's that level of commitment and it's, and we did talk about that later, she goes, you wanted to see me succeed, but you wanted to see me truly do what made my heart, you know, what, what set my heart free, what made my heart sing. And mm -hmm. she goes, doing what I was doing was not doing that. And that's why I acted the way that I did. And that's an incredibly, but you can't get there, you know, overnight. It took us an entire year uh, to do that, but that's an incredibly powerful concept of that, of that story. That's, that's such an awesome story. I, I love that. And it, the, the, you're, you're right. Like the safety, when you, when you ask a question, an open-ended question, and you're genu genuinely curious without any judgment, not even, not even right. a tiny bit of judgment, people feel that. And mm -hmm. then it disarms them and allows them to feel safe and open up. And then you develop real rapport and, and connections. So, but unfortunately, Rory, we are out of time. How do uh -oh. you feel about having another podcast where we just talk about legacy? That is a great idea. I love that concept. I love that idea. That would yeah. be terrific. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like we could, I, we don't have one on legacy. So I think that would be great future, future content. So let's, uh, let's schedule that. Um, but Absolutely. In the meantime, where can our viewers find out more about you? Uh, absolutely. They can go to RoryRoland.com. That's my website, or they can actually go to Coaching for Potential. Uh, that's uh, my podcast. And uh, so you and I are both partners in crime on podcast. Mine yeah. doesn't have the video. I just have the audio. And uh, I love to listen to things. And so I'm kind of an auditory guy, but uh, that's where they can get a hold of me. Great. Well, thank you. This has been so much fun. All of our conversations could go on forever. <laughs> Absolutely. We have so much to talk about. Um, thank you everyone else for tuning in to this episode of Executives Uncut. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe, share with someone who could benefit. And if you want to check out new episodes or old episodes, visit HodgesCoaching.com or follow us at Hodges Coaching on social. I'm Sarah Hodges. Thanks again. Thanks, Rory. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye.